What's going on guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and I really have to give you a cellular credit. You know, they kind of stuck with Windows Mobile, kind of stuck with BlackBerry and they were late to the Android game. But over the past, you know, 8, 10 months or so, they've really done a great job at bringing in those Android smartphones. You know, they have the desire, they have the mesmerize, and a new one coming, you know, as of a couple of days ago, the Samsung Gym. Now, this is a low-end device. It's not intended to compete with the desire or the mesmerize, anything like that, but this is great for those people that are migrating over maybe from a BlackBerry or from a Windows mobile device or even from a feature phone, and they're, you know, first-time smartphone users, they want that experience, that first experience into Android. It's pretty well equipped, and it's 30 bucks from US Cellular on a two-year agreement. Now, is this the device to get? Should you go with something else? Should you, you know, go with a BlackBerry? Should you go with three phones? What should you get? We're gonna figure it out and more in the Samsung Gym full review, which starts right now. You know, as we start to see the demise of feature phones and they kind of start to go the way of the dinosaur and these low-end smartphones come in, you're gonna see some new features, some new things. You know, and you have something like the Samsung Gym, which is available now at US Cellular for $29.99 after an $80 mail-in rebate. And all in all, it's pretty decent. A uh, little low-end smartphone. It has an 800 megahertz processor, 3.2 megapixel camera, though it doesn't have a flash. But still, 1500 milliamp battery, uh, physical buttons at the bottom, and the design, you know, for the most part, to me, looks good. I think actually, well, I shouldn't have said for the most part, for the all part. It looks good to me. And then you see on the left side, volume rocker, micro USB charging port. You have those physical buttons, like I said, an actual button here that, for whatever reason, it doesn't function as an optical trackpad, but when you're in something, you can press it, and it will uh, it acts as kind of an OK button. A physical camera button, lanyard hole, power button, and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, pull off the back here, and you can see on the back, it's got this red, kind of this nice burgundy red color. And you can see up here, micro SD card slot with an included four gigabyte micro SD cards. I mean, for low end device, you know, you look back and you think, okay, two years ago, we were uh, where we were at, you know, in terms of devices, or even four years ago, you know, the Motorola Razor years. And here we are now with smartphones that uh, even at the low end are capable of doing more than some of the high end devices of 07 and, uh, and 08. Four gigabyte micro SD cards, you can't beat that for 30 bucks. And, uh, and more. So all in all, it's a pretty good device. It's running Android 2.2, and it's actually one of the few Samsung devices that's not running the carrier's TouchWiz user interface. We'll wait for this to power back up. And it makes cool noises, too. Yeah! So who can beat that? That's worth the 30 bucks alone. It's like a little soundtrack on the telephone. Let's see here. I get excited. What can I say? I write about phones all day long. I get excited about the small things. But you can see, you know, the overall design looks good. It's very svelte. I love that word, svelte. And uh, you can see the curves look good. And it's kind of hard to see in the camera, but it does curve over here by the design. It just feels good in the hand. It's 3.2-inch display. And so, you know, if you're coming from a 4-inch display or 3.7 or you're coming from the iPhone or something like that where it's a 3.5-inch display, you're going to notice the difference. It is a pretty small display. Um, but still, you know, so again, somebody coming up, from something else, they may not have that problem. Now, one thing I've been particularly impressed with, device has an 800 megahertz processor, and I think part of this is, well, one reason is because it has a pretty decent processor, the other reason is because it's not running touch with, so there's nothing bogging it down. But once this thing is fully loaded up, there's no lag whatsoever. I mean, you look at competing devices, like the LG Ally, some of the other, you know, kind of mid-range, low-end mid-range smartphones, <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, you know, this is definitely much, much faster. So, you know, part of it's a stock build of Android 2.2, part of it's the 800 megahertz processor, but, you know, I've been working with it for a couple days now. Little to no lag whatsoever. Everything's opened up pretty easily and, uh, and no issues. Now, again, this 3.2 inch display, it's a low resolution display. So, if you're used to an iPhone display, QHD, Super AMOLED, which, you know, a lot of the Samsung Galaxy S devices have, uh, you're going to notice. The difference. Now, out of the box, you get browser, calendar, the typical Android stuff, and US Cellular has done a really good job of not throwing on a lot of carrier installed bloatware here, like City ID is one of theirs, My Contacts Backup, uh, let's see, Tone Room Deluxe, and Your Navigator Deluxe, and that's it. I mean, out of the box, you can't uninstall those, unfortunately, but that's all the US Cellular junk, if you will, that comes pre installed on the device out of the box. The rest is Android, and you know, I have I installed Quadrant Standard and Speed Test. But uh, the rest is pre-installed, and uh, you know you don't have very many pre-installed bloatware 
application. So let's take a look just, you know, to go through as kind of a refresher because we've been dealing with these Android phones for so long that have carrier installed user interfaces. Let's take a look at, you know, and try to get an idea of what it looks like just to be back on stock Android. You can see the, uh, you know, Android 2.2 tabs up here at the top, phone, call log, contacts, and favorites, your usual dial pad. We'll do this so you can see what the dial pad looks like. <clears throat> Here's what the call screen looks like. And of course, down here, we can go to menu for the call options. There's the dial pad, and then we can go to menu, and I can either mute it, do Bluetooth, or more. So let's say we want to end the call. A little bit of a change there from, uh, from some of the other devices. Contacts, Billy Bob, Old Man, the phone dog. We'll go back to that. Favorites, Old Man Baker is always a fave because he's a super cool guy. Contacts, let's jump into those so you can see. You know, let's go to the phone dog, for example. And you can see I have a number in there. I have it set as a home number. And uh, I have two options. I can call it or I can text message it. So it's kind of this clean user interface, which some people may find is kind of boring. But again, you know, for the device, for what it is, it, uh, it really makes it faster to have this uh, stock build of Android 2.2. So you have your phone, you have your email, you can add a postal address and organization. Then, of course, you get some additional options like instant messaging, notes, nickname, you get website. And you can add, so you know, for example, website, let's add phonedog.com. This is what I'm talking about. You can see that the keyboard is pretty small. Phonedog.com. And we'll hit done. And now the website comes up, phonedog.com. So keyboard's pretty small. You can use it in landscape mode as well uh, if you want to, but still, you know, 3.2 inch display, it is a noticeably smaller display. Let's jump out on that note and take a look just at messaging. And again, you know, a lot of this I just want to show you because we've been working with Sense and TouchWiz and Moto Blur and all of these different user interfaces for so long, it's kind of refreshing to see something different. We can type to compose, we'll imp change the input method. Out of the box, all you get is an Android keyboard. You don't get any additional keyboard choices on this device. Now that said, let's open up here and let me make sure before I say anything, before I open my mouth. Application. Okay, yeah, you can sideload applications. I just wanted to double check. So if you wanted to, you could install a keyboard, HTC Sense keyboard. Motorola is uh, kind of the Moto Blur kind of uh, multi-touch keyboard or anything that you wanted. There are a couple of great options in the Android market, Swift Key being one of them, and, uh, and a few more. So you have some additional keyboard options, you know, be it through side loading or through the Android market. So here's what it looks like in landscape, a little easier to type on, but let's say the quick, the Quinn Brown. No, we're gonna change the, we're gonna, the quick brown fox is awesome. So the quick brown fox is awesome in landscape. I actually have a harder time typing in landscape mode than I do in portrait. Let's try it over here. The quick brown Fox is awesome. So again, you know, pretty easy to type on. I'm a fan of the Android, the stock Android keyboard. A new one, you know, you remember the Nexus S review, there's a new stock Android keyboard that comes in 2.2.3, and you can actually download that if you want to in the Android market. So actually, we're gonna download that and see. Try to make this review a little bit different because all these Android devices kind of blend together and you know, I cover the same thing in every single one of these videos because it's stuff you wanna see covered, but kind of mix it up a little bit. We'll change this one around. Let's go to, wait for this to load, gingerbread keyboard. Now this is the keyboard that comes with the uh, the Nexus S. If you're not familiar with what gingerbread is, it's Android 2.3 and uh, this is the keyboard that comes with Google's Nexus S. I can't type. Now here I am seeing some lag. This is actually the first time I've seen lag on this device. I was working with the Android market yesterday and it's perfectly fine, but you can see little bit of lag there, still not, you know, absolutely terrible given what this device is. And we'll load this one up. Now again, keep in mind, um, don't take the, the network speeds, and actually I'm not going to run a speed test on this device because I don't have US Cellular. This is not a US Cellular native coverage area, so it's roaming on Verizon right now. So the data speeds, if I were to, were to do a speed test, they would be Verizon data speeds. So. Uh, keep that in mind, you know, these are not what you see when it downloads, you're like, man, this is taking a long time. It's roaming off Verizon, so don't take that as a, uh, as a hit against US Cellular. But let's see, 41%, while that's downloading, let's go back. What else can we look at? Let's say, so you have the calendar. 
and you can see again, you know, stock Android calendar and uh, with month, weeks, day list, and we can click on any certain day. You know, I happen to be a fan of agenda format, so I like to list it out and create that way. So, you know, again, you know, very basic, very straightforward. You can do change your settings through here. And then that reminds me of something, you know, on the calendar front, that reminds me of widgets. Now, press and hold on the screen. You do, this is stock Android, so you get five home screens you can scroll in between on this device. So press and hold here, for example, and you can see all five brought up. So if I want to go to the far left home screen, I can do it. And you see these little dots in the bottom that corresponds to what screen you're on. So because there are no screens to the left of this one, the dots are on the right and vice versa. I can go over and put them all on the left side. So if I press and hold, again, it brings up all those menus. If I want to get back in the center, I can do so. Now that's been installed, so let's see, show you what that keyboard looks like. Go here, input method. Oh, I actually need to enable it. In the keyboard, let's see here, in the keyboard settings, language and keyboards, gingerbread keyboard, it's ready to go. Now, I don't, you know, both myself and Phone Dog, and I don't endorse this by any means, but still, it's pretty decent. I've been very pleased with uh, the gingerbread keyboard in the market, but let's see what it looks like on here. So you can see, you know, really is kind of hindered by that display, the tiny display. The quick. Quick Brown Fox is awesome. So easy to type on, portrait, landscape as well, and that's your. Uh, your Nexus S gingerbread keyboard. So to get back in, I kind of got sidetracked by the keyboard uh, installing, but let's go back to widgets and take a look. Now again, minus some US cellular, okay, so not even with US cellular widgets, I thought there might be a widget for like Tone Room Deluxe or something like that, but these are all stock Android widgets. You have your analog clock, home screen tips, latitude, market, music, news and weather, things like that, the hall stock, and then of course you can download some additional widgets if you want to from the Android market, but you know, again, stock widgets here, some people love them, some people hate them, but they're kind of bland in comparison to Moto Blur, you know, HTC Sense, TouchWiz, things like that. But, you know, some of them are nice. I happen to like the news and weather widget. But you can see some differences, you know, the Google search bar, of course, the trademark Google search bar, and that uh, you do get those. So this is one thing that Android has that iOS doesn't have, the widgets. Now, the trade-off is battery life, but since this device has a 1500 milliamp battery, I'd venture to say that it's going to be a little bit better in the battery life department just because smaller display, less power consumption, it's a little bit better battery with 1500 milliamps in comparison to some of the HTC devices should make this device pretty decent in the battery life department. You know, I haven't been able to test it to the extent that I would have liked, but uh, I can say, you know, with a couple of days of use, I've only had to charge it once. So, and that's with pretty moderate use. You know, I try to put them through their paces while I'm testing, and uh, I've been pretty impressed overall with the battery life. So one other good thing to chalk this device up to, pretty good battery life.